Okay. Yeah. All righty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Book Asylum podcast. I am Jack Childress, and as always, I've got my cohorts, minus Dungeon Dan, who's having some serious internet issues on his hand on his end. So, ha ha! Now you know how I used to feel, jerk. So, <laughs> to get this party started, let me introduce you to Richard Ryan Rose, Kristen Vinson, Anthony Castro, Angel Ramon, and the guest this week who is guaranteed to knock this show completely off the tracks, the one and only Jason Myers. Welcome in there, brother man. How are you doing? Good, brother. How are you? Uh, doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Just want to make a real quick announcement before we get this thing rolling down the tracks or limping down the tracks or whatever we're going to do down the tracks. <laughs> um, as a lot of people know, we lost a very talented author and great man, great friend of mine and mentor, uh, Jeff Thompson, um, earlier this week. We're going to put together a tribute show. Um, we're still working on a date for it, trying to get all the players in place that are going to be participating in it. So just know that's coming and, um, you know, go out there and, you know, gobble up his books, man. Just, just send him up to the top of the charts one more time anyway what the hell so jason yeah, let's get on let's get on with this thing man so tell me tell everybody a little bit about yourself and how the hell you wound up on this show um if you book it he will come <laughs> i'm just uh i'm just a uh, the half one half a uh, crimson pinnacle here and just trying to fill in some big big shoes it sounds like uh no, not really. No, no, <laughs> no. no you'll, you'll be just fine. I'm, I'm pretty Perfect. sure of that. So now, Kristen, how long have you known Jason? Not very long. Long uh, enough for him to to corrupt you, I would take it. Yeah, I want to say, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you got to. Even more, even more. That's why, you know, they always say you got to be careful who you hang out with. Mm -hmm. or Or not, because. Frankly, I love the people I hang out with, and they're all fucking nuts. So, <laughs> right. mm -hmm. Can't go wrong there. So, um, how long have you been writing? Oh, like trying to do it? Three years. Three years? <laughs> yeah, I've been okay. published for three years. I've been writing since, you know, middle school and everything, and just put everything aside. I wanted to be a firefighter, and then I wanted to be a dad. And then I wanted to be a dad and a firefighter and a writer. And then I wanted to be a dad, a firefighter, a writer, and make money. And I couldn't do everything together. So mm -hmm. recently dropped the fire department thing because it just, it, it was taking the passion away from what my new passions are. And uh, now I can focus and I'm lasered in here. All right. Right on. Whoa. Kristen went. Kristen Ooh. went boom. Mm. But we yeah. let everybody know we do have some storms that are making their way through our area here. Me. Kristen and Richard all live in the same state. She's covering the west side. I've got the center, and uh, Richard's out east over there. So if you see any weird things happening, it's just because, you know, we're getting blown to Oz for whatever reason. <laughs> so now, what are some of the things you that that you do to keep yourself inspired, to keep pushing you to write more? Oh, hell, um, leaving the house. <laughs> 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 being outside of my house sometimes and then i just really want to destroy and fuck up everything outside of my house sometimes and well i get that opportunity and i can do it on paper exactly <laughs> see yeah, anthony good. it it is good to leave the house every now and then you know there's, there's oh, stuff out man. there it's overrated no, I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> no. i hear you anthony it kind of is well, you know, that's that's the that's the plus side of me doing comic books, especially with bad web, is because I don't have to live in reality. I can just make everything hey, up buddy. and put it on paper and it goes, man, it sells. There you go. The hummet, the hummet mice. <laughs> so yeah, what's this reality you speak of? I've never what heard of that? such I don't know what you're yeah. awesome. do not recommend. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about One some star. of your uh, some of your work there. Um, well, most of my stuff can be found in the Crimson anthologies. We've got a bunch of, uh, we've got six of them out right now, themed anthologies from mm -hmm. Twisted Fairy Tales all the way to, you know, the Grim Reaper and then, you know, the Witches. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love touching base into everything. I just, anything that comes, like, I just wrote a damn story about a Slurpee and it was not even horror. It was strictly a, you know, a gas station robbery just totally twisted and messed up. And people that read it, they're like, 
that's not horrible. That's good. I'm like, well, that's what I wanted to write today. <laughs> <laughs> now, where does an idea like that come from? I mean, just. Okay. Well, matter of fact, all right. So my mom was like, hey, you going to the gas station? I said, yeah, I got to get cigarettes. She goes, will you grab me a frozen Coke? Yeah, of course. She's a, she's a nice old lady. She loves them Slurpees, right? So I go to pick it up and I'm, you know, pissed off because it's already, you know, nice out, but it's not too nice. I'm like, oh, I was going to take the Harley, but she said, well, if you're going, just grab me a Coke, which doesn't fit on the Harley. <laughs> so I'm waiting in line. I'm already here to because I had to take the four wheel. There's a bunch of kids in front of me and they're just got out from prom or homecoming or some shit. And I'm like, just move so I can get Slurpee. I just get this and go. There's like eight or nine of them in my way. And I'm like, you know what? Uh-huh. <laughs> As a matter of fact, we can get rid of that. I went home and I started writing a Slurpee story. <laughs> well, hot damn. I guess to go to show you, inspiration can come from just anywhere. Like, anywhere. That's just A just lot nuts. of my stuff does come from, you know, working the rig and the department and the fire department and EMS for years and years and years. So I've seen Carnage. I can write Carnage and put them both together and describe it a little better. Okay, very cool, man. See, this is one of the fun things that I, I get out of doing these shows. It's just all the different angles and avenues that people get their inspiration and just how this, the most mundane thing can get turned into something so creative and so interesting. Absolutely. And it was just just an innocent thing. Like, oh, Slurpee, why not? Oh, here's a million dollar question. Slurpee, icy, or fizz freeze? Strictly mm. Slurpee all there is no million dollars there it is slurpee 99 cents even better yep i've never even heard of that i was gonna say i haven't heard of the other shit other than slurpee that's the only thing i've heard of yeah same here buddy <laughs> yeah the fizz freeze that's kind of your you know like you pull the little lever and it you know it fills in that's not like the you know the little pieces of ice with the the juice thrown in it it's like an actual fizz drink like you can get like coke flavored uh was it mount i've seen mountain dew i've seen uh-huh. cherry you know it's all different what well, i usually do the coke with a splash of cherry and then just kind of mix it in it's well i mean we, we, we midwest up here so we got the frozen burners that's a michigan tradition right there right uh-huh. mm-hmm. all right a little, okay. bit of captain, a little bit of captain in there with that frozen burners oh yeah. baby good summer treat right there sounds good <laughs> uh, we, yeah we got a question from dungeon dan uh it says oh, no. jason in researching you, I found several mentions of your mug of San Francisco. What is it about that city that draws you in? It's, there's another Jason Myers author. It's my entire life work to just destroy this guy. <laughs> He's from San Francisco. I'm a Midwest Ohio boy. I'm going to get rid of him. Him and then the uh, the field goal kicker for the Seahawks. He's next. There you go. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Damn all these Jasons out there. That's why sorry, I guess sorry, I'm... Sorry, Oh, I'm boy. not the I'm not the only Richard Rose floating around out there driving me nuts. <laughs> Somebody said I saw one of your books out there is about this, this, and this. I'm like, I didn't write that shit. That's another. Oh, what's funny is that I will sign the other Jason <laughs> Myers books, and I have at least six times because they're like, "Hey, I bought your book. Will you sign it?" So you want to sure. sign by Jason Myers? You got it. <laughs> <laughs> but you weren't lying. I mean, it's <laughs> you. you. Yeah, I didn't write it, but it's my name on it. <laughs> Yeah. that's great that's about how weird i felt when we were at the bigfoot festival earlier this year with uh richard and somebody came up and they were like so hey will you sign the books and everything and he's like yeah totally you know so he's getting ready to sign it and he's like i want i want you to sign it too and i'm looking at him like why and it's like well you're in it and i'm like yeah you're on I the cover write it. And i'm on the cover of the third one there but yeah i was like i didn't write any of this but okay <laughs> screw it yeah it's fine sign getting, it getting, you're on the cover <laughs> getting right on in there with it man it was it's man this whole thing is crazy. uh great looked up the wrong dude <laughs> Shocking. yeah yeah you're just having a bad day all around dan yeah oh, it's just not your day <laughs> go smoke some more pot buddy <laughs> oh, he's way ahead of for everybody <laughs> he, he good stuff. oh boy I love so, it. It's crazy. So what's what's the CPP? Uh, that's driving me nuts. I mean, is that one of those civilian certifications? I have no fucking clue what it means. I, I CPP? That's just our way of getting everybody to say it. CPP. CPP. Okay. Crimson Pinnacle Prize, baby. <laughs> we crimson. Okay. Uh, okay. Got it. Now I got For those it. Those who don't that, know, what exactly is again? Crimson Pinnacle Press? 
Crimson Pinnacle Press, you can ask your Alexa. She already knows it too. But we are a publishing company that we strive to give the best and the best of the anthologies. And we do themes. So we've got a themed book with, you know, 13 to 20 different authors in it from all over the world. It's not just us. So I'm just a little bit. This book right here, Season of the Witch, I'm not even in it. I didn't write a story for it. I didn't have a witch in me at the time. I just came off doing a trilogy with RJ on it. So I edited that book. But, I mean... Who's to say that my story would have been better than the other 15 going in anyways? You know, it's not up to me to say. It's up to all of us. And that's the, what we strive for. We get these open calls. We get, you know, they just come in, come in, come in. Then we get the hard part. We join it down to 50. And then we got to get it all the way down to 15 to 20. And hmm, That's cool. You guys are good. The people that write to us, they are so good. So good. Make me look so bad. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Something I need to know. Um, if one does wind up with a witch in them, how do you get it out? Um, look for our open calls. There's Bobby. Ah. Lots, of, <laughs> lots so, of lubrication, Jack. Lots and lots of lube. Lots, lots of, of lube. Yeah. Yep. Okay. No, okay. Um, <laughs> pay attention to our, our page. We got open calls coming up at the end of the summer too. We've got, you know, I think we've got at least six that we just signed on for in the next couple of years. And they're all going to be, they're good themes. They're not redone stuff that you've seen. It's not, oh, give us a zombie story. No, we give you at least three or four things that you have to hit. And if your story is great and you missed it, I love you guys. But uh, sorry. Dungeon Dan asks, do you accept submissions from all writers or only published authors? Nobody. We just it's all ghost writing. It's just RJ. <laughs> no, uh, we take it for anybody. As long as I mean, we'll take reprints too, as long as you own it. But normally we don't look for the reprints, but mm -hmm. it's something that great, like, yeah, we gotta have that. And we do it. I mean, whatever we can do to put the best book out there for the people to read and enjoy it. Like we've got right now, minus the rain and the nastiness, we got the Dead Heat anthology out that we put out last year. And it's all summer, end of summer camp, end of summer slashers, end of summer, you know, going back to school. It's all that end of August, September feel. The heat's nasty. I mean, we love it. I mean, what else could you want in the summertime? I got people messaging me saying they're taking their kids camping and they're reading it. I'm like, ooh. Oh, no, no. <laughs> and then uh, actually for that one uh, Richard Chismar wrote our forward for it it's like four or five pages of him just explaining exactly what indie horror is and what it started and what it can grow into and the importance of little you know places like CPP and the, what we do and try to get people read that's a big thing we just want we don't care if you buy it get it on Kindle get it on KU it's on there just read it and love it and look at look at our catalog look at the you know the authors we have are awesome awesome and we've got we got another one coming out this year. It's called Thanks, RJ. It's just my book written for him. And it's got 31 bangers from different indie authors. And it's not just horror. We've got mixes of, you know, like mine is basically like a comedy central roast of RJ. And it's a make-believe story called Crimson Pinnacle Press My Ass. And it's <laughs> this, this fake tale of how like RJ title. brought me along to West Virginia, this cat farm bullshit that he lives in. But I've got, you know, Bridget Nelson. She wrote a story about RJ and the Mothman. I got Volpe writing. I've got, I mean, all these people are just, it's just a love of this community. And I feel like an asshole because the book was like 20 people. And then we went to AuthorCon and I met everybody. I met, every, I'm a social butterfly boy. I was falling and running and dancing all around that room for everybody, trying to meet everybody. And I signed on, I signed on another 10 or 11 authors right there at Scares That Cares on the spot to sign up for Thanks RJ. And like as soon as Con was over, they were already sending me stuff. And that's what it is. That's this community. That's what the whole independent and us and what we try to do and be seen and we just love it. We're fans first too. That's the best yep. part. Is I can read all your guys' mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, and that's a, one of the cool things, like you said, you know, the whole indie community is, for the most part, you'll run into a bad egg here or there, but everyone stin tends to look out for each other, try to help in any way that they can, you know. Yeah, that's so important. So now my question is, for these anthologies, is there like a word limit? Obviously, it would have to be. It's an anthology. There is. We're we at a hard count. We normally cut it off about 8 to 12 or 8 to 10. Okay. Um, but we try to... You know, if, it, if the story's really going and you're going to cross into 9,000, don't you dare stop. You know, let us read it. We'll make adjustments. I'll shorten my story. RJ will shorten his. Whatever we can do to keep the book the size we want it to be. If the story's that good, it's going in there. I've had them that are under par. You know, they're shorter than whatever, and they're in. I mean, I can't say no to that story. That's great. It's going in. I was going to ask, um, what is, like, the shortest that y'all would put in there? 
Uh, Till Death, the one we just came out with a month and a half ago, we have a opening poem by Andrew Lennon, and it's two paragraphs, 30, 40 words. Hmm. Oh. Nothing, different, nothing different from him as it was. If someone give me an 8,000 word thing. I mean, it's a grim reaper. It followed the prompts and everything. And it's, 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 I mean, it's Andrew Lennon. Of course you're saying yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, shoot, I might just have to sling Domino your way and see what you think about it. Man, you, if I showed you my yeah. inbox, the people saying, what's next? I need in, I need in. You look at these names and you're like, wow. Damn. We love it, man. Good. We love it. Awesome. Awesome. So now are you working on any like full length books of your own or are you pretty much sticking to shorter? Dude, stuff? I got my own, I got my own banger coming out. Uh, and D day 11, 11, uh, got called metamorphases and it's got all my crimson stuff in it. It's got all my other collective stuff from, you know, different anthologies I've been picked apart in, in you know, the last five years and they finally get a home all in my big red book. Don Noble did my cover for it. Um, he, he, I met up with him at AuthorCon, and he was, oh, my God, he's incredible. If you ever look at Don Noble covers, that man, he's going to see him on everybody's things. Wow. But, yeah, I've got my own collection coming out. He's got four new short stories, including Slurpee, awesome. which is actually one of the longer things I've written besides a novel. You know, I did a trilogy with RJ, but as far as, like, a short story-wise, the word caught on that got away from me, and I just, like, it's one of the things where I'm in the story. I'm not stopping. It's my book. I don't have a word limit. I can do what I want. <laughs> Plus, I always, I, you know what? I've got like four or five other books with my flash in it. So in the back of the book, I've got, you know, I think 12 or 13, 14 different flash stories that are on top of, you know, already 12 or 13 full length stories in there. So it's going to be a thick little baby. All right. Hey, now, Jason, yeah. now, Jason, I want to ask you, you know, uh, what it, do you have a particular favorite story that you just absolutely enjoyed writing and you would um, consider your all time favorite? My all-time favorite one that I've written would be Corsican Sins, which was in our Twisted Legend, our Urban An Urban Legend anthology. And being a twin myself, I have a twin uh -huh. brother, and we always joked around, like, if I pinch my arm, you can feel it, and such and such. And I ran with that as my Urban Legend. I'm like, you know, we can do this, and not to give too much away, but we go separate ways in our lives. I want to be a writer. He wants to be a musician, and he's on tour. He gets into some confrontations and takes matters into his own hands, and I get the joy and the pleasure of him going through with these acts and, and, you know, becoming him, himself a nice little serial killer, but I'm uh -huh. miles and miles and miles away, but I get those endorphins. I'm like, you need to keep doing this. I don't have it in me to do it, but obviously you do. Let's keep going. Wow. That, that sounds story, cool. There's so much truth in that story about me and my twin brother, like, you know, from riding motorcycles together, growing up, getting in fights in high school together, growing up. And just, you know, there's two of me running around in this world and and then I twisted it, you know, I put my twist on it and, and made it my urban legend. And that's probably the best thing I, I feel that I've written start to finish. Um, I do have like a bunch of you know, 911 and EMS stories and stuff that are mixed into stuff. But those aren't so much the fiction. Those are more just like, this is what's happened. And now you get to see it too. But that course of concerns is, it always goes with me. I always want to read that one every time somebody asks me to read something. All right. Sounds great. Sounds great. All right, well, Bobby, since you're on the scene, jump on in here now. Water's nice. Hey. Well, yeah, that's <laughs> nice and warm. I got Bobby glasses out here. Hang on, you keep going. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I got I got Jason the coolest glasses. <laughs> oh, goody! Here we go. As soon as we can find them. This is fun stuff. This is where we have fun. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Say, well, your your sunglasses game. Oh, look at that. Oh, I like those. I like those. Right. I know. I can't look at <laughs> Walk on. <laughs> All right, Bobby, take it away. <laughs> I got her warmed up for you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thanks. You just stole me out there. <laughs> That's how we do it on this show. <laughs> I'm actually just getting back from, I'm doing the, uh, 26 mile walk for, or was it 36? I don't know. It's a lot of miles for a fat girl. <laughs> Got to walk three to four miles a day <laughs> for St. Jude's Children's Hospital. In the heat <laughs> of the summer, nonetheless. Yeah, right. in the heat. Okay. I'm there fat. Go. I got big boobies, and they respect me to do this, but I'm going to do it for St. Jude's because that's what we do. <laughs> 
<laughs> boobs for St. Jude. That could be a new thing right there. <laughs> yes, I'm telling you, big boobs are hard in the heat. <laughs> mm-hmm. oh, yeah, I and, I thought it, and I thought it was Jason that was going to knock this thing off the tracks. Oh, yeah. That's not what I knew. I, missed it. I, I played dad for a second. What happened? <laughs> uh, we were discussing uh boobs for saint jude you know trying to yeah oh, this is what that. happens when you get myers chris and me together we we just throw everything off track <laughs> <laughs> uh, and by the way we have uh me edwards watching as well hey me how you doing what's up lee and, and dungeon dan said fucking hell best glasses ever <laughs> <laughs> right I was like, what could be a better birthday oh, yeah. present for Myers? You know, a little early birthday present to get things kicked off. <laughs> uh oh, this <laughs> not going. <laughs> All right. Oh, he's back. <laughs> Sorry, I had to close the door. <laughs> oh, uh, I thought you were getting something. <laughs> okay, that's it. okay, Dungeon Dan. Stay calm, Jack. Just because she said boobs, it's inappropriate to get a chubby. <laughs> that's what i say about that you bring up boobs around me i can do what i want damn it come on yeah. chubby let's go just not on camera <laughs> good chubby yeah. well it's like i told y'all even though dan's not here dan is still here he's very hey, much but, still here yeah we have to warn you this is not pg-13 this is r-rated so Prepare for yourself. Oh, definitely. Definitely. We could talk about those all day. You might want to get the whistle. What mm. Bobby, yeah. Bobby and Christian, what about Pecker? <laughs> He's the big Pecker. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Jason, are you just writing full time now that you left the No, department? hell no. I'm barely writing at all. But no, <laughs> um, I'm writing all the time, but I work AT&T too. I mean, I push, I sling phones like I do books, man. If you want a show, come on in. I'll sell you a phone. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> there you go. Oh, back on. Sorry. Wow. So y'all yeah. are still Perfect. dealing with some power issues out that way. I uh, said, so yeah, we. I'm starting to get my little warnings yeah. are popping up now. Well, the thing is, is for us to lose power, it's bad because we never lose power. So, oh, yikes. Anyway. So Jason, I, I know you, you said you have a day job and you write, and uh, I assume you're a father of some sort. Yeah, some, some sort. sort. Some sort. <laughs> some sort. <laughs> uh, how do you find? How do you uh, find time to uh, sit down and actually write? Because I that's you know, I, mean, I have kids part. home all the time, so I know the, it's the best good. part is I'm really good at my words, I'm really good at my colors and my shapes, but I suck at time and scheduling. So. I just go until I can't go and I fall asleep and then I get up and I start doing it all over again like a pop tart, man. I'm ready to roll every day. I spent yeah. so you guys have no idea how long in my life I've been hidden away and stashed away like I like got freaking I'm in like I'm in the penalty box and now I'm like, all right, everybody about to see me now. Yeah. <laughs> Jason is really good. Myers is really good at multitasking. A lot better than I do because I know there's been plenty of times I'm like stressing out about something I'm working on and he's like Calm your tits down. Yep. You know, <laughs> prep, yeah. They are. Get your shit together. <laughs> well, yeah, I just got to remind people, man, just breathe. I mean, it's, I, I yeah. do, I force myself every night, no matter what, I have to stop, take a dig, big, 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 big deep breath in, hold that. A, a, a dick <laughs> breath. <laughs> <laughs> you take a dick breath in. And, and then you just pass it, throw it in, and slip. back to you, you do it again. <laughs> so i don't know if it was ash because i know uh i went out for a little while uh at the beginning so jason what got you into writing and Indeed. like what age when did you start all right you ready for a story Bring it yeah. to i like telling stories <laughs> so, you're a writer you're opinion. supposed to you got 35 this, minutes this yeah, ain't buddy. bluetooth okay this is these are hearing aids all right so i've got shit hearing had it since i was little you know kindergarten i filled a hearing test you know 9 11 i you know, happened i went to try to join the army i filled the hearing test seven times got seven free t-shirts out of it Damn. so it sucks because when you're 12 13 years old all you want to do is go hang out with your buddies and all they want to do is go to the movies because that's where all the girls are at so we're going to the movies every you know every day in the summertime and i can't hear shit on the screen 
because I'm just like, oh, okay, so we're just having a good time. Everybody's laughing. I have no idea what they're laughing about. Like, most recently, I went and saw Deadpool in the theater and hated it because I couldn't hear what the hell he was saying because I read lips. So imagine being, you know, 12, 13 years old and you're trying to have fun and you're just like, I don't want to go to the movies anymore. This sucks. And so all my buddies were over and they're like, all right, we're going to the movies and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, all right. They're like, aren't you coming? I'm like, no, nah, man. And they left and my sister came over. She's like, what are you bummed about? I'm like, well, I wanted to go to the movies. She goes, so go. I said, I don't want to go. I'm tired of not being able to hear it. So she ran up to her room, came back down and slapped hardcover first edition Stephen King it down on the table. And she said, read that. I said, I don't want to read that. I want to go to the movies. She goes, read it and you go to the movies. So I spent the rest of that summer, you know, 12, 13 years old, plowing through Stephen King's it. And I'm like, all right. And then we went and we rented the, you know, the Tim Curry. I'm like, man, that book was so much better. Like, and then yeah. I, it. And, that, and from then on, I was a pleasure reader and I loved it. And then I got tired of reading like, I'll, you know, I want to read something about this. And I didn't see it out there. I'm like, I'll write it. You know, I, I sucked at school, except for, except for, you know, music. I was great at music and English. I always got A's and everything, but I sucked at everything else. I suck at math. I suck at times tables, you know, but um, I always got A's in English and I always wrote and I always enjoyed when you had the, uh, you know, here's your, your summer reading list. I did it. I always did it. You didn't have to. I was probably the only kid I know that didn't lie to Pizza Hut and got his free pizzas for reading every fucking book that was on their on their placemats. I, I remember that. I remember I could that. Not stop reading. <laughs> so, and that's the thing about me, obviously, is I'm not standing still because what we were talking about off screen is taking into effect. Thank you, gentlemen. No, um, so no, I'm, I'm, moving. I'm moving and grooving, right? So that's my thing. I, I can't sit still. That's why I love the short story. That's why I love it because. You like my I always tag my 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 logo and everything. It says Jason Myers indie horror fiction, which is what you know Crimson is. We are indie horror fiction. And then I put get in, get twisted, get out, because I ain't got time for the bullshit. I, I love it. I'll read it every year in October. Don't get me wrong. It takes me forever. It takes me all of October. And I used to be able to read it in a weekend. And I don't have I got too much going on. Like like you were saying, there's so much going on. So give me a short story. I'll read 15 of them bitches. I don't care. Oh, I just read a book. I didn't even realize it. Yep, check that one off. Go get my free pizza. I was <laughs> all about the book it program. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, just either go to the movies and get irritated or read a story or write a story and go hang out with them after. Go catch your bike and go do that. And I'm still doing that. I'm still hanging out with my buddies. I still ride a Harley. I'm still riding my bike. I'm still writing stories and I can watch movies with closed captioning on. Hey, it's good to be nice. Yeah. What a time to be alive, guys. Right. I can promise you the army would not have helped your hearing. No, I was uh, artillery for eight years. I wear hearing aids also. Probably not as bad off as what you're saying, but yeah, it's I can't hear for shit. I can't yeah. say I do much for military structure anyway. So I kind of like mm -hmm. to do my own thing. I was, <laughs> was going to say, I yeah. get in trouble pretty fast. <laughs> yeah, I got kicked out really quick. I, I got tired. I got tired of it too after 34 years. Oh, right. Wow. I said fuck it. Uh, 34 yeah. years plus. <laughs> I said fuck it, but. Yeah. And now I can do weed now. It's such a great thing. I love retirement. It's awesome. Mm. <laughs> 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 right. no, cigarettes. Yeah, smoking cigarettes like these. Yeah. yeah. Exactly what we meant. <laughs> totally what we meant. Oh, I, 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 I gotta cue you guys in real quick here. Hang on. Let me see if I can figure out how to put my thing real quick here. All right. Well, you're doing that. I'm gonna hey. give a quick shout out to Michelle Beatty, hey. who is popped in hey. and is watching right now. So hey, hello, hello, Michelle. How you doing? Hi. <laughs> Enthusiasm. Come on now. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I literally have on my Harley on the back of it. On the top of it, I got Cupid, which is my story that I wrote. And I love the fucking logo that rolls made for it. And then on the back, it's got the Harley emblem and it says do fun shit. I've got a shirt that says do fun shit on the helmets. I never wear on my Harley. It says do fun shit because I constantly have to remind myself, stop being so fucking serious and go do fun shit. Yes, that's something that Myers gets on to me a lot because I'm serious, too serious, take things too personal, and he has to whip my ass a couple times, but that's all right. Yeah, I'm having a hard, I'm having a hard time seeing you as serious in the you know, the short amount of time I've known you, but come on now, serious, <laughs> seriously, she, she's, she's, so serious. she's more serious than than any of us. I am. I I'm very 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 serious, and I I really take things personal. But you get me having fun with a group of people like myers and chris and you guys 
man, I'll pop on that cone head and walk around with silly glasses. I don't yeah. care. But <laughs> yeah, but last night, last night we're trying to talk St. Jude's and we're trying to talk everything with Mr. RJ. What the hell are you on that one, Freezy? Oh my God, what did you get? Oh, RJ, I'm, I'm going to put your books on a boat. And I'm going to put your books in there and I'm going to give them a sticker. And I'm like, what the hell is she talking about? <laughs> I'm on a cruise, man. Because they put her books on a cruise and she's like, oh, let me put glasses oh. on. I was like, what the hell? I should have put I should have put oh. on my glasses. Gave me some soup bar. I stay <laughs> inside because I had too much fun. All right, well, new new rule for Bobby Jean. When you have to be at work and on call, but there's a chance you're gonna be on the show, take a pair of glasses with you. There you go. I do, I do. Let me hang on, hang on, no, because I'm okay, work, okay. <laughs> Here we go. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. She's like, I'm here for five minute ramp up. I'm in my car. Yeah, well, oh, here we go. There we go. Heck yeah, I'm I'm prepared. I got a whole dresser drawer full of silk glasses. I got my cold <laughs> head um, hit from me though because I embarrass my family because I'll roll up to Walmart with cone head on. I don't care. <laughs> 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 don't embarrass them. Job well done. To fit right in in Walmart <laughs> though. I mean, I I work in Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> Just to embarrass my family. That's what I do. Oh, okay. Now this is a new name in the uh, comment section. Joe okay. Budich. Hey, the Black mm -hmm. Rose is on. Whoop. Hey, hey, Joe. How you doing, buddy? Talking about me, man. Y'all to read his <laughs> reviews on my books. They're hilarious. Joe really? Really? Uh, yeah, okay. He's, uh, he's, 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 he's a done, big horror fan. He's done reviews recently on my books. Yeah, he knows you real well, Angel. He told me that, but yeah, he's done yeah. a couple of reviews on my first two books. He's reading the third one uh -huh. right now, but yeah. They're, they're 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 entertaining. Just reading the review, his reviews are entertaining. Yes, awesome. yes, that's yeah. they are. <laughs> Can't wait to uh -oh. see what he what he thinks about that heroic character, the Bear Baron. That's going to be <laughs> good. He yeah, is such he, a good he, guy. He says I'm a writing villain now, so he's call, he's calling me the Black Rose. That's my villain name now, I guess. But. Okay, okay, I like it. I like, I like it. it. Oh, and uh, and Love Joe it, said yeah. Angel. So, yeah, Joe, what's up, man? Yeah, I can't wait to get me a and Rice on audio so you can review it too, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> and speaking of which, um, how many of the anthologies you guys have out there that are also uh, narrated? They're on Audible. All of them are not narrated. <laughs> uh, we do have, okay. I mean, we've got our Eternal Sisterhood series, our, uh, our witches. That started us they are narrated and they are amazing the problem that we're running into with the anthology is we've got so damn many of them now and we've got so many more and do we want just one person reading one story do we want someone reading the whole book do we want them reading every book that we have are they going to sign on for i mean we're going to keep going and going and <laughs> Hi, uh, well hello my lady <laughs> right there catching lightning bugs last night um but I mean, there's just so many great stories out there. And I know a lot of these authors have their stories in other books. And so they already have it on Audible and they're already narrated. And like there, and you run into that problem with like, oh, can I borrow your story that you already have? Oh, what? <laughs> I mean, yeah. I want yeah, them all. Joe, yeah, Joe says do one person per book. That's what Joe says. Yeah, I guess See, it's kind of the keep the consistency of that voice, you know. Right. If you keep well, jumping that was from the problem different... we ran into with our sisters with our when we did the Eternal Sisterhood. Payable on Death was read by you know Lindsay, and then uh, Hell's Bell or Devil Daughter was read by Lindsay, and then Lindsay wasn't available for book three, so we were like shit back to the drawing board, and we had to start listening to all the auditions again. I'm like, all right, but I want to say yes. Let me send you what you're coming into because our first narrator voices she did you know the different dialects the different she was she was in these stories you could feel her reading these and we kind of set that bar high enough for her and she knocked it out of the park with book three so it was like perfect where which actually you know it worked out great because the way rj and i wrote these books was a single flow where you didn't know where i was tagging in and he was tagging out and vice versa same with these narrators if, if you listen to i know great thing if you listen to all three, you uh, you can't tell the difference, and that it's so perfect, and that's exactly what we were shooting for. Cool, because yeah, I've always said, man, uh, if you can get a good narrator that can really get into your story, into your characters, man, it's a game changer. I mean, yeah, big time. And at the same mm -hmm, time, yeah. if you get if you get the wrong narrator, 
yeah it's going to kill it you know, no matter how good the writing is they're just they're going to wreck it and that is it's it's a yes. chance you take sorry pop <laughs> go find your brothers <laughs> no, i figured i was going to do the trick <laughs> <laughs> I love cameos. Can't beat a good cameo. No, you can't. Absolutely not. Yeah. Uh, a matter of fact, hold on. You want to talk audio? Here we go. I always got something laying around. Always got something. And these were fantastically done. Boom. Oh. Oh. Looky, looky, Little looky. Richard, look at that. For Wendy. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have ever read the Gwendy's trilogy, but they are phenomenal. They are okay. I have to put is it G W E N D Y? You got it. Stephen King and Richard Chismaw. Okay. Hold the phone. I'll cut your sandwich. Yeah, I've noticed here lately. It seems like some of his uh, more new releases just aren't really meeting a lot of fans. Yeah. Fans. <laughs> yeah. That, that, yeah. There's some truth to that. No, I've. I, you know what? I gave up after the Institute. I, I mean, I will read everything Richard writes. I, he can write his book. There you go. I, I, he writes his grocery list. I'm going to read it. I, I love the style that Richard writes in. I love everything about it. King has switched gears, you know, all the big names. And that's the thing. I am so invested in indie. I, I love the other guys, but man, I can pick that up anywhere. Look at this. Look, at, look what Beauregard is putting out. Are you kidding me? I'm not going to get that over inside of, you know, my little mom and pop gas station that sells paperbacks, but I'm going to get it on Indy and that's where I live. And sorry about everything. King's come out with. I'm sure it's great, but dude, Indy rules, man. I say it, it, it gets a rap, a bad rap. And I don't understand yeah. why, because I, I think I the biggest part of it is people, people see people Indy. Don't know what it is. They don't, they don't realize that it's, we can write the things King wants to write, but we can say the things that we want to say without someone saying, geez, you can't say that. Oh, yeah. Oh, watch oh yeah. Watch me. Yeah. Hold my beer. Nobody's ever going to read that. Oh, yeah. Watch them. No one's ever going to buy that. Oh, yeah. Look at Amazon. Yeah. Tell us tell us what else we can't do. I dare you. That's why we, uh, that people are scared of Andy. It's because it's real. Well, I'm going to give you a real good example because he's right here on this panel is Richard Rose right there. This guy yeah. come up with the idea for I want to do a buddy horror you know let's do a buddy horror but one buddy is a human and one buddy is a sasquatch <laughs> what's wrong with that you know and why don't we just drop some zombies in there just for the fun of it you know and see what happens that's me I and mean, roll seven foot he's seven foot three and he's covered in hair except for the top of his head so i mean that's me and a sasquatch right there <laughs> that's that's how i that's how i envision uh that's how i envision buford the the main uh bigfoot in uh Richard series when he gets older is he's just going to be bald up here but still covered he'll, in hair everywhere else. He'll have a skullet. Yeah. There you go. A skullet. <laughs> well, those are great books, Richard. So, oh, thank you, man. Thank you. Well, Appreciate though. it. No, yeah. they're like TBR yeah. again. Well, see, and that's a, that's, a, that's another one of those. On to I just gave the first book to my mom. Uh, the one you sent me, I sent it to home with my mom. She's going to read it. She's a big Rock reader. Roll. So it's going to be fun. There you go. It's going to be funny. Oh, we'll we'll back. Can I get book two? <laughs> oh, she's not offended by the foul language like my mother is. Oh, no, no. <laughs> my mother likes RJ's logo and RJ's stories better than mine. So, who else's mom is available? I got some stuff you to read. Well, she probably likes RJ better than you, too. So, <laughs> everybody likes RJ better than me. That's okay. No, I'm scared of RJ. <laughs> Well, now, when, when we get to the end of the show, I always do the, the, the big wrap up, you know, where I get everybody to tell everyone where they can find their work and, you know, go find their books, go find all their content and all that. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and jump the gun a little bit because I'm going to need to go ahead and know where to get at least one of the books that you're in so that um, I can get it up here because I'm a nerd this way that I take yes. books and I frame them and I hang them. I'll so, tell you what, that's easy peasy because I've got, you know, if when it comes to what, when somebody asks for books like that, I said, all right, well, you want that cover? Season of the Witch, by all means. It's a awesome. It's the best book that we put out, by all means. It is amazing. 
and I am on the cover of it. And then I've got a dedication in it. And then I edited every word in that with the, with the guys at CPP. Sweet. I'm not into but Twisted Legends, however, that pretty blue, that pretty blue book's gonna look so good up there. I just hope you can get it to where you can open it up because as you open it, it's a little naked contortionist in the woods sitting with some skulls. And you're looking at it with a straight cover, you can see half of it, but Ooh. I like it. Yeah, it, it caught my yeah. eye out. I was looking at it. Yeah. <laughs> he said at least something in your house is well hung, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> We're on a roll with this today, Dan. We're on a roll. <laughs> you can have something well hung and naked if you get this. Uh, Jason, uh, yeah. The uh, Twisted Dungeon Legends, Dandy is that your like, Twisted you. Fairy Tales stuff that you were talking about earlier? I'm sorry, say that again. Deaf guy, I couldn't hear you. Uh, no, uh, you were talking about uh, Twisted Fairy Tales earlier, and I'm like, I love fairy tales and stuff yeah, like baby. that. So is oh, that the Twisted Legends? Tales. And, you know, fairy tale is fairy tale horror show. That's the first book we put out, our first anthology, oh, and that okay. that one's amazing too. Oh my god, that one's so good. I'll be looking into there's that. A, there's a story in there called Pinocchio is a wooden hoe, and that's exactly <laughs> what indie oh. is and what we can do <laughs> and what we can push. And we came out swinging with that one, and that is everyone's like, I love that story. I'm like, I love that story too, man. <laughs> so it depends. I mean, what do you want? What, here's what I say when I'm at the table. I said, pick your poison, man. What, what do you want? What are you into? I got it. I guarantee I got it. Heck yeah. That's cool. Well, I'm definitely going to go out and, and snag at least one of those two to get it up on the wall. But now once you get your first like true full length novel, that's just you by yourself with your name on it, nobody else, that is what's going to wind up up there because that's what it. I'm going for. And the thing you about this wall, which I mean, as you can see, it it goes a little further over, and then of course mm -hmm. there's the the shelf over here that's covered up, and I've still got so many more frames I've got to get. I mean, how I've got stuff over here, I got the angel wing over here, I got the wicked mm -hmm. wing over there, about to put the wild eyed wing Tell in what, over I here. Got some, I got something perfect for you, and I haven't told a whole bunch of people about it. So I got a short story. It's in a chat book now called Cupid. Because somebody asked me to write a story about Valentine's Day. And I said, you know what I can do? And you want me to write Valentine's? And I hate Valentine's Day. So I made my <laughs> Cupid a demon from <laughs> hell. He gets, to, he gets to rise up on Valentine's night and just wreak absolute fucking hell on anybody adulterating on their husband <laughs> or wife. So he gets to come out after the cheaters. Well, that book went over so well. Everyone's like, I want more. And I said, you know what? I'll, I'll tell you guys right now. I'm making a, a novel. It's going to be called Cupids. And it's yeah. actually 14 different versions of my original Cupid that wreck havoc that same night all around the world. Different Cupids from different areas wreak different habits in different ways and styles. So you've got your Asian Cupid and he's, you know, very good with his swords and such. And it's... uh. I, I'm not a creature feature guy, but everybody loves that story. And I'm not a splatter punk guy and I'm not an extreme guy, but that is everything that is. It's extreme, it's splatter, it's horror, it's nasty, it's gross. It's, and I, like I said, I've been an EMT for you know over a decade. I've seen my fair share of open people yeah. and I love getting into it and I can do that. So when I'll give you whatever you want for your, your shelf and then for your wall, I will give you cupids nice dude i am psyched the wall is psyched Good. i literally just felt the apartment shake <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's oh. trembling with excitement it, oh this, this this thing is alive make no mistake about it this thing is alive and it tells <laughs> me all the time to keep oh, it's eating so it bad. otherwise otherwise one night because i'm literally sitting on my bed so that is beside me at night while i sleep and it's threatened no, more yeah. than once to just collapse on top of me if i don't keep <laughs> adding to it so yeah we hope that doesn't happen a little, no, little, Amityville, little Amityville feel right there. I like it. I like oh, it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy around here. And it all started off because I won a book that was autographed by someone who was an indie author. And I was like, I've never gotten one of these before. That's a good so got, for, uh, story, Jack. And so I just I wrote up, you know, things saying, hey, I'm going to frame this. And I hung it up. And then next thing I know, I've got people going, hey, uh, if I send you a book, will you hang it up? I'm like, well, yeah, sure. Then, well, y'all can see behind me now. <laughs> that it 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 is grown. you know what you're you're what i like to refer to as a fellow word nerd mm. i've got mm. i've got everything i had a library i'm talking lawyer bookcases 
everything on display. I had everything cemetery dance, you know, that, that thousand dollar it, I had that autograph. I had it all, man. And then that little pink thing that's been running around behind me, making all these noises, eating ice cream. Now that I'm going to have to take care of her after the show. Thanks guys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> needed a nursery. And I went out and I bought a whole bunch of, uh, storage bins and they're still in those storage bins, but I'm going to get a wall just like yours one day when I grow up. Well, I'll tell you, Amazon <laughs> and <gonna> happen. <laughs> it, um, the frames that I started out with, because if you really kind of can see my wall in person, you'll notice that some frames are thicker than others. It's because I started off with one brand, which is just kind of a basic brown, you know, wood color. <laughs> but then this other brand came along and dropped their prices lower than them. And I'm like, well, it's still the same well, thing, I right? Well, make one little suggestion here for your interior decorating. Instead of the brown, if you're going to mix it all up, should try crimson. Ooh. Ooh. I know. I see what you did there. Nice I see what you did. Like that. Yeah. We always selling, baby. We're always selling. Well, now, the thing is, I can find I can find the uh, crimson and the red frames. So don't put it past me. Don't oh. put it past me. Don't forget, you have the LED lights that I told you about that you need to put through your frames. Oh boy. What just came through where you were, Kristen, has just arrived, and it mm -hmm. looks like, I think I just saw Dorothy go by. Yeah. <laughs> Cal, it's, it's getting darker in your room, man. I can. I, 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 I know. Yeah. That's why I turned the overhead light on, and it's still got darker, because it is rocking out there right now. But, yeah. Oh, yep. And, and See, we have a band of storms coming. I just I'm, sitting here a little bit, I'm in a little bit of a drizzle, but. I'm just yeah, sitting there. I, love it. I won't sit under. I, won't, I'll, I love it. I got to sit out here. <laughs> we're go we're going to say that this is storm front Jason that's going on yeah. out here right now. This yeah. is what's happening. We just had sirens going off. I don't know where Ooh. they were, but. Y'all are tired to now. Okay. Well, y'all did. Go far away. Now. I don't know what happened. Hey, y'all did catch the Tennessee in, in what she just said, right? We got sirens going off. We got sirens. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so what what are you working on right now? I mean, anything that you've got in the hopper that is just chewing you up, that you just ready to get it done and get it out there? I am working on a story with Lisa Vasquez. Um, we just started partnering up and we're coming up. It's going to be a 90s, uh, you know, alternative grunge style, kind of a, a, a twisted mixtape that goes through these people's hands and every song on the tape gets deeper and deeper into this disgusting love. And, and, uh, it's going to be good, man. It's going to be so good. That's jumping off my fingers right now. Uh, plus I got the thanks RJ. I've got those stories. I'm still, you know, putting them in the dock and going through those and it's going to get up. Uh, RJ is going to end up editing his own book with me, but, um, it's so good. And I'm reading these and I'm, everything is just moving so fast and I'm loving it. And we're, we're just playing catch up right now and we're just trying to get back out there and be known. And I, I can't wait to get this Lisa Vasquez story out because she is so damn good at what she does. And now I got to keep pace with her. Like that's, that's a, that's a challenge right there. And I'm up for it. So uh, without giving too much away, kind of, is there a little, you can tell us about this particular project? Like, maybe what's it about a blurb per se yeah um i have a shit memory so i'm gonna do terrible at saying it but i'm gonna say hey if you go on my page all my links are on there you'll see it uh you'll see blurbs from lisa and everything on there uh picture kurt and courtney uh picture the seattle feel uh a lot of flannel uh we're talking um <clears throat> We've, we're dedicating each chapter to different fields of songs that are in this mixtape, but the songs go from, you know, that lighter feel of the nineties alternative and everything to the, uh, now you're into, you know, your glycerine and you start feeling that, uh, Oh shit. Uh, and that's without giving too much weight, cause she'll kill me. Uh, mm -hmm. and yeah, exactly. Gonna, that's what I was like, preface that, that, so. <laughs> but yeah, a little teaser. I'm chopping at the bit to get on that one. Awesome. Awesome. That is freaking cool, man. I said, I just, I, I mean, writers are the kind of people, and I, I get this at work a lot because, you know, I've started writing because of, you know, peer pressure 
Richard, <laughs> Jeff, all y'all. So, mm-hmm. you know, I've started doing it and it's like, I'll go to work and they're like, well, hey, at least you get to go home and write, you know, I mean, it's like laid back and all that. And I'm like, no, no. It's, it's, it's really not. It's not laid back. It, it's stressful. You know, you're like, I got to go home and write. And then you get home and you go. Hmm. Why can't I say this? Yeah, I, I already, I already yeah. have it. It's out. I know it's already in my head. Why can't I just tell my fingers to put it where it's supposed to go? You know all the letters. You know what order they go in. Well, now, and Richard knows my biggest weakness, which I've gotten better at, but I think it's what makes it more tedious is the the color. You know, adding the color. You know, adding all the, the description. Same. You know, trying to explain the setting, the scene, what everybody sees, what you see, and it's like, why can't I just go? The dog ran down the road. It bit the zombie <laughs> exactly. on the leg, you know, like, it's like, no, I need to know that he ran by a yellow mailbox. The yellow mailbox belonged to the Jones family. The Jones family had lived in this home for 20 years, you know, <laughs> like five children. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's, that's where I envy writers like you guys, because you guys are able to do the whole descriptive thing and like, you know, make it lay out this awesome scene, but I do comic books. So it's like, the artist does most of the description, you know, it's like, mm-hmm. I tell them what's going on in the yeah. scene. And oh, they, what the hell they, is that color of the green lantern today? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, I say, you know, bad wabbit jumps on top of this and, uh, yeah, so, but the, the whole coloring of it, the, the, the scenery and everything, that's all on them. So it's like, I tried to write a few stories, uh, you know, but I'm not good at the whole descriptive thing. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, uh, what my mentor RJ tells me: stop trying and just do it, man. Get to work. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, that's what oh, that yeah. Richard asshole tells me all the damn time. <laughs> that's what Chris tells me. Right, the damn book. does that too. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Just gotta I, do I, it. The damn book. You edit later. You know, you go back and fix <laughs> what's fucked up later, but just get the story on paper. I'm going to play on Facebook. Leave me alone. <laughs> All right. Just 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 to catch up on Dungeon Dan over here. First off, he said, can't wait for Cupid's, and he will get it. Guaranteed. He will go get it. Jeff, he dance like that. Let me go grab uh-huh. one right quick here so I can show you what you're gonna be getting here. Right on. And then okay. course, he follows he follows that up with the rain moving in, which is now here. Uh, let's face it, Tennessee could use a bath. You know. mm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, Abba to Ramstein. I don't know what he meant by that, but there you go. Nonetheless. Talking about the 90s grunge thing. There it is. Ah, true. Cupid. I keep it. I thought it was going to be the penis cover. Oh, oh look at oh, that. That, that, is cool. that little hearts and... Yep. Oh, okay. We got little hearts and we got arrows and oh, we're beautiful. Oh, that is nice. Yeah, that looks beautiful that's cool. indeed. That yeah, cool. that I do like that. That is sweet. Well, now let me ask you something. You obviously, I would assume anyway, that you sign books for people if they want signed books, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, give us an example of some of the off the wall because there's no way in hell you just go, "Hey, thanks for getting my book. Much mm-hmm. love, Jason Myers." It's like what kind of stuff would one expect? To have personalized into their book if they got one from you signed. Oh like, shit! Oh shit! That's a dirty question. You know it. That's loaded. That's my job, man. That's my um, job. I was gonna say this is a radar show, but you know. <laughs> yeah, I got oh, a shit. big old blue pecker. Hang on here. Hang on. You got a big old blue pecker. Step outside. He's like, yeah. I gotta step they, outside. They, they, wait, that, that's a you having a big blue pecker is a completely different show now hang on no, that's, that's from ain't, my show so, that's ain't that supposed to be on only fans sometimes i'll draw a hand turkey on there right because i make a I make I make a big ass hand turkey and then i have one lady ask me for something else to be outlined and then signed it i didn't know my signature was so fucking long guys <laughs> <laughs> This is what I get the Myers. <laughs> oh, damn it. Damn, Hi, Christian. Up. Are you up there? Sorry, girl. <clears throat> okay, yeah. This, that's good. I like that. That's the, phones that's are the way lighting up. The phones are lighting up. Bobby, stop fucking calling in. <laughs> 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 You're not that tough, Myers. <laughs> ah, damn it. All right, well, guys, we have come to the final five minutes of the show, and it's going to take us a little minute to get around to everybody. So let's get this 
wrap up started and first off jason man thank you so much for being on mm -hmm. um obviously next week the book asylum is taking the weekend off we may use that time Perfect. to record the tribute show or not we still working all that out but um then after that then we have bobby jean as the guest then after that we're gonna have all three of you back together again but that said this was so much fun Jason, if you want to be in on Bobby Jean's interview in two weeks, dude, I'll send you the link. You're in. Like, all right. I'll tell you what. You I won't even answer that yes or no. Morning. Yeah, you're guilty with that chocolate ice cream. <laughs> 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 Give it away. So, um, I'll put it up for a vote on Crimson Pinnacles Facebook. If, if they want me to do it again, I'll do it again. If they don't want me to and said you're an idiot, don't do that. I won't do it. So, oh, and it's and. Oh, and it is funny you brought up that Deadpool was the movie that was irritating you, and yet I've got him on my head right now. You know, oh, you just, were in the dark there for half the show. I missed it. I, I know, right? It's like it's <laughs> it looks all those books it, back there. It's like the end of times out there right now. I don't know what the hell's going on. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's kick this thing off. I'm gonna start this time because you know, Richard's book's been out for a short minute now. So Richard Ryan Rose, where could everybody find you? Uh, you can find me on my website, richardrrose.com, and on uh, my Facebook page, uh, Richard R. Rose Author. Uh, my books are available on Amazon, iTunes, Goodreads, um, all that good shit. So, uh, Wild Outside the Boys, Dead Cold War, released it on May something, May 12th, I believe. And the audiobook is now available as of uh, last Friday. So, uh, go check it out. And just so everybody knows, the battle scene at the end of uh, Wild Eyed Southern Boys 3 is freaking epic. It <laughs> is unreal what he threw together there. That's It's it's insane. It's sweet. I love it. Bobby Jean Murphy, where can everybody find you, homegirl? Oh, back in the hot seat. Um, No, go to Linktree, um, the Bobby Murphy. Find all my sites. I'm on Amazon. You can also order from me. And don't, don't, I don't remember dates of when I release stuff, but you can find the Bonnie series, Amazon, or through the, the Linktree account. I'm bad at dates. <laughs> same. <laughs> same. No, totally same. <laughs> well, Miss Kristen Benson, who has been a craft making machine here recently, where can everybody find you there? So yeah, both my books are on Amazon. Uh, it's called Within Your Thoughts. Uh, book one, book two. You can Sorry. also find me on Facebook under Chris Benson, yeah. as well as a new Facebook group uh, with Bobby and I under uh, Country Girls Creation. Uh, you can also find me on TikTok under, I think, author... K. Vincent or Kristen Vincent author, one of the two. One of them. Um, and also on Instagram under uh, author K. Vincent. All right. Well, I had to flip a coin on this one because I got two guys here that both have brand new things going on right now. Yep. Since I let Anthony go last the last time, he's going to have to go <laughs> first this time. So, Anthony, dude, Kickstarter, mm -hmm. comic book, dude, yep. what is up? Let everybody know what's going on. So uh, Bad Wabbit number one will be uh, kicking off the Kickstarter here in about four days. Uh, it is my first comic book series for DMW Comics. It's going to be epic. Um, I already have book twos written. Uh, it just needs to be edited. Um, and then it'll start production. Uh, of course, it's written by me, edited by Chris Philbrook himself. Name and drop. Bam. Yeah, I mean, dude, the guy's awesome. He's helped me through this whole process, and I can't thank him enough. Um, I'm actually sitting here with Bad Wabbit number three on my laptop right now, looking at it. Uh, I'm starting to write that right now. Uh, in four days, we're going to kick it off. We're going to have hoodies, shirts, comic books, uh, plushies. I mean, it's going to be uh, shebang boom. You know, it's going to be coming out like crazy. So um, we're going to be doing that big. I'm going to be doing a month long kind of like live stream thing where every now and then I'm going to have somebody come on and we're going to talk bad wabbit. We're going to talk whatever they're doing. 
and uh, where they, you know, where they heard about it, how they think about it. Uh, Chris Philbrook, he said he would come on. Uh, Jack, Richard, Kristen, everybody, Angel, and we're all going to be on here and talking about it. And uh, it's going to be a really cool thing. It's going to be a month long uh, adventure, and I hope everybody gets uh, signed up so they can be a part of it, man. It's going to be awesome. Uh, if you guys want to know anything about it, go to DMW DMWcomics.com. Uh, and I have my store on there. I have my my uh, social links. Uh, you can find everything that I'm doing, including the Kickstarter link. Uh, I'm going to put the Kickstarter link in the chat here uh, in the comments. So yeah, that's what I'm doing. And four days, uh, it's a three-year mission coming to fruition. So it's going to be awesome. Can't wait, yeah, dude. I'm Absolutely cannot wait. wait. Seriously, awesome. dude. Yeah, you know, and this does mean I'm going to have to get a different kind of a frame you know for the comic book because it's not going to really set right one of these big shadow box frames so i'm gonna be getting me a proper frame for that and oh yeah the wabbit will be on the wall you better get three because there's three different covers for the same comic book it's gonna be awesome well you're just gonna have to get your own wing then fucker <laughs> <laughs> anthony castro that's why oh, anthony, you covers. guys see the cover right i have the cover as a poster right here uh that's so not, that not cool yeah, seriously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just gorgeous. Really awesome. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. All right. My liege, the one and only yes. Angel Ramon, who has just recently stepped back into the horror universe with his newest release, Pina Coladas and Rats. My brother, break it down. Let everybody know where to find you and where to go get this awesome so, release. So, where, so I'll start where you can find me. You can find me on Amazon. Just look up Angel Ramon, my main. You get you get that and all my other horror insomni books, and you can look up Anxious Maximus from my Nid RPG historical fiction stuff. I am on Patreon. Just look up Angel Ramon. I'll be having book two of Peter Canals and Rice uploaded to Patreon. So please go join. There's only two dollars a month if you want to read my stuff in advance, and I'll be putting a link to my new book on the comments. So let me do that right now. And, and just so everybody yeah. knows, I am a little biased towards this one because me and angel from day one have been trying to figure out how he could write me into something but let's face it there's no jack childress in ancient greece ancient rome we, it's not gonna work guess where he turned out puerto rico yep. <laughs> yeah so it's, it's oh, a, okay so it's basically a puerto week it's like a 1980s puerto rican harvest you know kind of rats it's been, if you ever read the rats by james herbert it's kind of like you know it's kind of like something like that but I said in London, it takes place on a tropical island. And and Dungeon Dan, I don't know if you're still there, but yeah, Dungeon Dan will be in book two, by the way. So Dungeon Dan, get get excited. And you might want to read book one since, since it's going to set up nicely into book two. And yes, our Dungeon Dan, it does have Santeria in it and all that good stuff. <laughs> and, we were, and me and Jack were talking about if this thing really takes off, Mike, it's, it's, it's right now. Maybe Jack could, uh, and me and others could write spinoffs to that series. Yep, so, that's kind so, of a plan. That, that's down to nine. That's down to nine. We're not, not to get too excited right now. Of course, but real yeah, quick, Lee exciting. Edwards, who since you talked him up, Angel, just said, I hope you get eaten by rats slowly, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. One for you too, damn it. Just yeah. Giving them out left and right here. And just uh, real quick, this is a final send-off for old Dungeon Dan over here. Said, I'm on Chapter 17 of Wild-Eyed 3. Very touchy feely with many hard nipples. <laughs> <laughs> Stay. Stay. Man, I think okay, I know wait. which scene he's talking about. Okay, huh? so here we go. He come in one more time before we get us out of here. Sure, there was Jackus Big Asses was a hit <laughs> as a custodian for orgy cleanup. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's but that I don't know something like that. That's uh, that's not that's, that's not reasonable. I don't know why something like that. This Go is what I that. see, Jason. This this is what I deal with every we single week. Here? Hey, somebody's got to wipe down the bathhouses, Jack. It's an important job. Yeah, okay? for real, man. Yeah, yeah and, that, and and that's why I, that's why I hired Cody to clean those damn bear bear cages. Come on, man. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can't be soiling these delicate hands with work like that. Are you out of your freaking mind? What's wrong with you? <laughs> fucking crazy. Mm -hmm. ah. Anyway, let's get on to the guest of honor, the guy that helped yep. keep this show 
firing down the tracks, even though there were wheels flying off, taking out mailboxes. I think we oh. took out a busload of nuns somewhere down back there. <laughs> but it's okay. I think I saw two or three of them limp away, so we'll be all right. So, Jason, my man, break it all down, dude. you got a lot going on with, with the, the publishing company, with what you're writing. Man, drop it all on everybody, man. Let it go. It's so easy. It's so easy. Even my bookmarks are easy because they got QR codes to everything. Now... We just made it that much easier because we got the link tree thing going on here. So you can just link tree search Crimson Pinnacle Press right at the top. Everything is pinned. Look at him go. Did you find us? Are you looking? Nope. Hang on, damn it. I got the Not you. thing Look, I'm you. trying to monitor. Yep, everybody else. Go freaking find it now. You can go to crimsonpinnaclepress.com. You can get a hold of us on Facebook. Google search Crimson Pinnacle. We're private because we get to keep all the uh the slot machines away and all the free celebrity crushes away so we get to pick and choose who gets to hang out with us and we're gonna you know we just had a party the other day because we hit 700 friends you know so hey. we're giving we're giving away books i'll give i'll give away everything i don't care i just want you to read it. <laughs> that's why i wrote it read it i can make money selling phones that's no big deal read my stuff <laughs> crimson you know, and well, see, and that's something that totally gets lost in all this, man. A lot of times with a lot of indie authors, they're not going into this thinking I'm going to get rich. They're just not. You know, they're no, I, 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 I agree. There's a lot of them that are, and then you don't hear about it. <laughs> right. And it's these pop-ups and the pop up, pop down. Uh you gotta know this is this is work and this is below minimum wage, and this is because we want to, because we don't want to go to the movies. Right, because we want to do this. We want to read something. We want to write something. We're word nerds, man. That's what we do. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, man, I had an absolute blast hanging out with you. Well, now, see, I'm going to eventually have to make my way up to where you're at so that I can, like, you know, hug you real tightly as you drive me around on your Harley, you know. Big hug. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I guess I would probably have to, like, get Bobby Jean off the back of the damn bike first, you know. But <laughs> there she goes. She's turning crimson. Look at that. Mm, hey. <laughs> this guy is a marketing machine, everybody. And I'm so happy that he was our guest this week. So for Richard Ryan Rose, Anthony Castro, Angel Ramon, Bobby Jean Murphy, Kristen Vincent, and the guest of the week. Hope to see him again in two weeks and three weeks. Jason Myers. I'm Jack Stop. Childress. This is the Book Asylum Podcast. We're all about the books around here. We will see you guys in two weeks as we plan on taking next week off for the holiday. Would have taken off this week, but man, seriously, dude, we got this guy. Come on, man. It's we had to make it. an exception. It was well fit. You, you freaking kidding me. But then after that, this month is basically dedicated to that chick, that chick, and that she male over there. <laughs> so we. Which one? Are, um, well, <laughs> you, dude, ish, it, whatever. whatever. Yeah. Anyway, let's get out of here before I wreck this any freaking more. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the Book Asylum Podcast, and we are out. See ya. <laughs>